Welcome to part nine for our component-based space shooter series in Godot 4. In this video, we're going to be connecting our, uh, we're going to create a destroyed component and an explosion effect, or we'll create the explosion effect and connect it to the destroyed component so we can have an explosion when the enemies are destroyed. And we'll also do that with our player ship as well. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is create our explosion effect. So if we come into our components, there is actually a script here called one time animated effect. This script uh, doesn't have component at the end. Um, essentially what it does is it gives us a class for animated sprites that uh, the class automatically destroys itself once the animation has finished playing. So if we create a new scene here, go to other node and start typing one time in fact, it'd probably be easiest just to type animated effect. Like here, we can see one time animated effect. It in inherits from animated sprite. Um, we can double click on that. We can call this explosion effect. Like this. And save it inside of effects right here. Now we'll give it a new animation, new sprite frames. Uh, the animation can be just be called default. We don't need to give it a name. We can come into assets, find explosion. We'll do one vertically and five horizontally. That should give us all our frames. We can click on them here and add them. Now this animation is going to be a little bit slow. So we'll want to set the animation speed to 10. And then we also want this animation to autoplay. Otherwise, uh, we're never going to hit our, it's never going to destroy itself, it's never going to animate. So we want to just select this little autoplay on load here. Okay. Now we'll save, and we can come to our enemy. Our enemy, our root, our, our enemy scene here, our base enemy scene, is going to need a spawner for this effect. So let's add a new spawner component, and then... We'll search explosion in our file system over here and drag over explosion effect. That's how the enemy will create this effect. Now in code, we could connect to our stats, um, no health signal, and just have it, dis have it spawn this component. But I already built a new component for this called destroyed component. And all this does is connect our stats to our destroyed, our destroy effect spawner, which is just this spawner here that we created. And then it tells you what you want to destroy, which is the enemy, the actor. So essentially our destroyed component just says, if you run out of stats, spawn something with this destroy effect spawner and destroy the actor. Um, so it can kind of do that code for us. We don't have to write it since we have a component for it. Don't have to rewrite that code all the time. Now, if we save and we run the game, our enemies will create the explosion when they're destroyed. However, you can see, uh, hey, Ben, your destroyed effect component doesn't work properly. Um, and that is because by default, animations are set to loop. You see this animation is set to loop. This button was already pressed when we created this animation. However, if an animation is looping, it never actually signals the animation finished. Um, animation looped does signal it, which actually this is a new signal that I didn't know about. So that's kind of good to know. Um, so there's a couple solutions to this problem. The easy solution is just to turn off looping on the animation. And this is the solution that I would recommend, right? That solves the problem right away. However, I realize now that maybe my component could be updated. And uh, I think it's fine to do that in this video. So we'll come back to our animation here. Let's see. We have to click on sprite frames, I guess, here. There we go. That worked. And we'll turn looping back on. It's on by default. Maybe we should leave it on. Then if we come into our uh, one-time animated effect component, 
we can actually alter this. We can say animation looped dot connect Q three. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. Now maybe it will uh, destroy itself even though it loops. And it does. So that just kind of that kind of creates like a I guess a fail safe for this component so that even if it's looping, uh, it still destroys itself. And I'm curious to see what happens if we turn looping off again, if it still works properly. Um, and it does. So that's, that's great. We just updated this component. I guess it's not a component, but this script. We updated this script so that it is slightly better for the designer, for the person that's using these scripts, right? Um, there's less, it's less error prone. It's a little bit safer for the person using it because we connected to that loop. If they forget to, if, if, they're, if their effect is looping and they forget to turn it off, then it will still just, and it still does its job, which is run the animation one time, right? That's its job. So, awesome. Let's go into our ship now and our ship, we want to be able to have our ship be destroyed as well. So the first thing our ship needs is a stats component. It needs stats in order to be able to be destroyed. I'm going to leave its health at 1. Now I'm going to uh, also connect. I'm also going to add a hurt box component because our ship doesn't have a hurt box. Okay. And we'll give it a collision shape. And let's do, we type collision shape here, let's do a collision shape polygon. Now this will allow us to get more exact collisions. So when you have the collision shape polygon selected, we get these buttons up here, and we can select this little green plus one, and we can actually add points on a collision shape here. Oops. Um, messed that one up, but I can move it later, so I'm not going to adjust it now. I'm just going to do that. Then I'll select the blue one so I can move this one up where I actually want it. And on our hurtbox component, now that that's done, we can come to our hurtbox component. And it doesn't need to be on a mask, but we do want to make sure that its collision layer is set to player hurtbox. Great. Okay, so we have stats and we have a hurtbox component, right? But we still need to connect them together in order to, for the ship to actually be hurt, right? Um, if we look at our enemy here, we have a hurt component that connects the stats to the hurt box. So our player needs that as well. So let's do our hurt component and connect our stats to our hurt box. Okay, now the ship can be hurt. It, its stats can go down essentially each time it gets hit, but uh, it can't be destroyed. So we need to add a new spawner component, and it's gonna call it's gonna call it spawner component two because we already have one for lasers. But we'll call this one explosion. S explosion, spawner component, and we can remove the two. And then we'll add a destroyed component, just like our laser, or just like our enemy has. And we'll select our ship, we'll select our stats, and we'll select our explosion spawner component. I forgot to add the scene to the explosion spawner component, though. We want to make sure and add that explosion effect. If we don't, we're going to get an error when the ship it's an enemy because it's going to be like, ah, the scene export was never set on this spawner component. Um, so yeah, we'll come to our explosion spawner component and set the explosion effect here. Okay, now um, our ship can hit the enemy and be destroyed. But we also want the enemy to be destroyed as well when it hits the player. Now we could give the player a hurt box or a hit box um, on the ship, 
But there's an easier solution for this. If we just come into our enemy and we come into our script for the base enemy, what we can do is connect the hitbox component on our enemy. So hitbox component dot hit hurtbox, that's a signal it has, dot connect. We can just connect Q free here as well. So basically if the enemy if the enemy's hitbox ever hits something, it will be destroyed as well. And um, however, I will say that we got an error message here. Come into our errors on hurtbox entered, error calling signal hit hurtbox. Um, yeah, so look at look at our enemy. This problem this problem comes up all the time because I forget it a lot. Look at our look at our hit. Look at our hitbox component. Look at, at its hit hurtbox signal. It has one argument that is passed in, but Q3 doesn't have any arguments. So we need to call unbind and we need to unbind one argument from it. Just like we did before. Okay, now let's see what happens. If we hit the enemy, boom. Now the enemy doesn't create its explosion effect. Um, so if we look at our destroyed component right here, we have a destroy function. And all it does is spawn the explosion and free the actor. So instead of connecting to Q free here, let's actually connect to our destroyed component. So I'm going to drag it over, hold control, drop it. Oops, it didn't put it where I wanted it. Let's try that again. There we go. And we'll do destroyed component as destroyed component, this. And now, actually one of the YouTube commenters mentioned that um, since we're doing as destroyed component at the end, we could actually just remove this part here to save a little bit of space. Um, that's all it really does is save a little bit of space, but it kind of makes sense because we are going off the screen here. So I, I think that that's actually a pretty good idea. We should still get autocomplete. Let's make sure we do. Um, so now instead of calling q free dot unbind here, we'll call destroyed component dot destroy. We don't want the parentheses. But we do want to do unbind and pass in one argument. Okay. And we did get autocomplete still, so I'm actually going to um, remove. Let's see that one actually. Um, doesn't have as, so I'm just going to leave it. That does save a little bit of space, um, and we still get autocomplete. So that's a good suggestion. Okay, now when we run the game, we get an, uh, we get the explosion because instead of just calling Q free, we're calling destroyed component destroy, and that gives us the explosion effect that comes with that component. The the little bit of extra behavior that that component lends us. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, the game is looking pretty good so far. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're interested in my Godot courses, there'll be a link in the description and a little pop up at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching this series. I hope you're learning a lot from it. And oh yeah, my courses are also on sale right now. So just want to mention that. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.